launch of this beautiful publication, Beyond Drawing, um, which we published on the occasion of the exhibition Beyond Drawing, which um, we had here in the galleries last August, September. Um, and um, it, the exhibition comprised work of six artists, and um, all of whom would love to be here today, but all of whom can't be here today for one thing or another, including COVID, has struck again. Um, so that's really disappointing for them. But we are delighted that who we have here is one for Brian Fay, who is going to uh, launch the book and also uh, talk a little bit about drawing, because drawing is Brian's passion. Um, many of you may have seen his exhibition here uh, earlier this year in January, February, March, um, which was called uh, The Most Recent Forever. And um, that was an exquisite exhibition, uh, which really um, gave us an opportunity to look at, at drawing and to think about time. Um, and so we're really pleased that Brian is here today to, um, to talk about his passion and to launch this book. So hand over with that for everybody. Thank you. Rowan Moriers and Lisa Rappard. The 
The show is curated by the Human Dynamo, that is artist and curator, curator Carmel Kramer. And the book is designed with signature sensitivity and elegance by the ever inventive designer, the gallerist and curator Uli Dunn. The book has marvellous photographs of each artist's work and installation shots of the shows by Jez Nisgodo. As we'll see, he presents so effectively the new and site-specific work that ran through these exhibition spaces going from ceiling to floor to wall. In addition, it includes an introductory text by Anne Davin, a curatorial framing note from Dutch artist Arnold Kramer, and a starting composition text, an expanded drawing by a critic and writer, Vivian McGillivay, and linking the works in Beyond Drawing to these wider concerns. So that's the hard sell over. <laughs> it's up to you now. The word beyond in the exhibition's title, I suggest, is a useful point of departure to think about this show and this book, and to more broader issues in the temporary drawing. If something is beyond, then from what is it beyond, and how has this been done? From the off, it's important to note that drawing is not a single defined entity that has remained unchanged. It is an activity that is continuously mutable, constantly adapting to new forms, emerging technologies, and conceptual attitudes. Artistic shifts in the last 120 years have seen drawings grow, materials and conceptual approach move across multiple forms and uh, conceptual positions. Equally, drawing does not belong to any one discipline. As we know, uh, like everything we wear was drawn, everything in this building was drawn, every form of and use for drawing coming from their own sense of visualizing and pictorial vocabulary that was necessary to communicate the development and realization. One train of thought on drawing is that since modernism, drawing has, uh, which had previously been considered a more, let's say, traditional view and not a discipline in and of itself, began to re-examine and investigate its own essential nature and uses. Drawing was previously seen and taught through the academy systems as something like solely to show off your observational skills, your, your technique, a form of mastery, or a form of virtuosity. It was embedded in the idea of the observation. It was used to develop studies, it was used to develop prototypes, to present architectural plans or problem solving for design issues. It was, as French artist Ongre declared, it was the probity of art but not an activity that had the same status as other forms, chiefly painting and sculpture, drawing being decidedly secondary in status. In, in fact, as Alice Marr mentioned in her graduation ship in the late 1980s, she wasn't allowed just to show drawings in her degree show, because that wasn't proper. You had to have paintings in to support it. Um, all due respect to painters and drawings, by the way. In his catalogue essay for Beyond Drawing, Queen McGillivray discusses the late 20th century contested discussion of drawing being understood and distinguished as a noun and drawing being understood as a verb. So, in English, the drawing drawing's root is both a noun and a verb, the former implying a completed object, that which has occurred, the latter an act or process, an ongoing state of presentness. And it's a useful barometer as a way of seeing drawing as operating from an identifiable object. We might think of the idea of charcoal or pastel on a sheet of paper, for example, to the more expanded experimental field of drawing that could include materials such as wire, tape, wood, or steel. And all of those were in the Beyond Drawing show. And here we get a science American artist, which is Sarah's claim that drawing is a verb, as in it's a system, or it's a gesture, it's an intuitive activity that is not dependent on just a picture or a pictorial outcome. Who at this time, like many other artists, Sarah's, this emergent conceptual artist in the 1960s, they began to use this form of drawing as a way of pushing conceptual boundaries. So suddenly drawing had moved from something that was traditional and skills-based, and now suddenly it finds itself allied with major shifts within the sort of Western conceptual art happening with people like Sarah, with people like Solowit, with people like Robert Rechner, and his famous erased print drawing. So, 
within this sort of Western tradition, it's not exclusive, but it is quite a dominant approach for drawing from the mid 1950s on to mid 1970s. And what is also achieved by this shift is the curator of Michael Barbara Rose in her earlier 1976 sort of seminal survey exhibition and catalogue essay and those who like drawing and know the drawing now in the 1976 show noted that while drawing as a result of modernism moved from one context, that of a minor support medium to another, that of a major and independent medium with distinctive expressive possibilities altogether its own. It also crucially maintained the relationship between idea and execution, which was always present in the history of drawing. I think what Rose is doing here is that she's acknowledging that drawing has always carried the idea of, of concept within drawing. So for her, she wasn't saying, you know, the technique-based thing was just physical activity, and now we have conceptual drawing. For her, she argued even during the Renaissance, the, 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 the idea of decennial, was always a marriage of concept and the hand. So it talks about the brain and the hand moving. And in that sense, you might think of, say, Da Vinci's drawings or flying machines or his drawings of submarines or those beautiful drawings he has of the flow of the river arm. So Rose would curate and promote drawing that operated within this conceptual, verb based category, frequently curating works by artists like Hannah Darwin or Sonny systems-based uh, way of working with repeating forms uh, across different scales and forms, walls, ceiling, floors, etc. Um, and the event of Article of Mars. More recently, there's an uh, absolutely fascinating writer um, and art historian, Anna Lovett, who specializes in drawing history and research, and I couldn't recommend her not. In her excellent recent book, Drawing Degree Zero, The Line from Minimal Conceptual Art, Further discusses Rose's show and speaks of the omission that so many women artists also practiced them at this time, including Haradina Kundal, who has an absolutely stunning show on in uh, Emma uh, at the moment, a small retrospective, and another uh, Adrian Piper, for example. So Miguel goes on to cite the importance of the later show, drawing now eight propositions. So this happened in about 2002. And this was curated by Laura Hoffman. Laura Hoffman is now currently the director of the Drawing Centre in New York. So Hoffman's show was a more sort of global-facing one than Rose's, US focus. So Hoffman firmly embeds the idea of drawing as a noun, as also being a vehicle for the figurative, for the illustrative, for pictorial, for image making, picture making. And she included artists like Elizabeth Payton, who did these absolutely sort of luscious watercolor and pencil drawings of Leonardo DiCaprio and, and Noel Gallagher and this. Um, and Tilda Cadori does these absolutely wonderful large drawings on a slightly waxed paper of architectural structures and doors and floors and chairs, all on uh, at the one to one scale. And the, the drawings are about sort of 20 foot and surrounded by this sort of glorious empty space. And uh, Yoshimoto Nara, who's has these really playful inspired manga based uh, figures um, looking at ideas of consumerism and identity. To Cara Walker, so Walker, as people would know, perhaps uses the figurative exploration of um, African American history and using the silhouette as a, a standard for ideas of black identity and anonymity, and particularly around ideas of um, slavery in the Southern American states and oppression. So unlike Rose's selection of artists, all these later artists from the 1990s to 2000s here are all daring to use colour. I think which anyone, if you happen to see my own show here uh, earlier in the year, you know that's a little rich one for me. <laughs> um, McGillale also usefully goes on to say that since these determinations of verb and noun, that some of the best work being produced in the medium derives its impact from a dynamic tension between these two contrasting inclinations. And I think in this way of thinking, we can consider drawing as something operating in a field that goes beyond binary distinctions. And in many ways, drawing strength is its insistent resistance to being categorized both as a discipline and an activity. For, anyone, uh, for any one claim, 
by drawing, there is usually an equal and valid counter claim. So, for example, and these are just far from exhaustive, simple binaries, all hold validity within drawing, and the previously mentioned verb and the noun. But we could also consider line, tone, tradition, contingent, image based, object based, observational realism versus the gesture of autographic mark, skills based versus mark making, monochrome versus color, instructional, ambiguous, intimate, monumental, pictorial, performative, declarative, speculative, diagrammatic, illusionistic, modest, monumental, text, illegibility, forceful, fragile, layering, erasure, serial, unique, abstract, representational, preliminary, and finished. And this non-exclusive list brings to mind that stuff with Jared's maxim that protested and frustrated intelligence is the ability to hold two opposed ideas in mind at the same time and still retain the ability to function. <laughs> Again, we can see the usefulness of these contradictory impulses. As philosopher Alan Bajul notes, drawing is fragile, but it creates a very fragile, intense fragility. In this way, it is the drawing's ability to function in these endless, oppositional, contradictory manners that allow us uh, for its plurality, strength, durability, open-endedness, and continuing inventiveness to watch over us. Artist uh, Shazia Sikander, who uses the, uh, as a source Indian and Pakistani miniature uh, traditional paintings for her drawings, installations, and films which deal with ideas of identity, politics, and more global world politics. She observes that drawing is a way of navigating the imagination and it remains the fundamental vehicle of my practice. Drawing allows me to be at my most inventive. And for me, it's this possibility of inventiveness that marks the exciting point that drawing is in now. I find that drawing moves generously and intuitively and questioningly across so many different forms now that we do not need to ask why is it, rather what can we do with it? Since Hoffman's 2000s show of eight propositions, there has been so much curatorial work and artistic work done on presenting and promoting new ways of thinking about and around drawing that move between those ideas of verb and man and all that space in between. The work of the previously mentioned Drawing Centre in New York, the recently established uh, Neil Drawing Institute in Houston, Drawing Room in London, Drawing Centre in Diepenheim, the Netherlands, and key shows like the Encyclopedic Online in MoMA in 2011, which is curious of by former director of the Drawing Centre, Catherine Zayer, which explored the line in its 2D and 3D forms, like so much of the work in, in about here in the show we are drawing. So it was the idea of drawing on the line moving off the page and into ideas of space and into ideas of time that has so much resonances with the artists here. Uh, close to home, the initiative Drawbridge, uh, based in Munster Technological University, focuses on promoting the capacity of drawing to give form to thought. And again, Quark's Gluckstone's gallery's recent show a line around an idea of ways of knowing through contemporary drawing practices, which presented a simple and complex line as a community form with its huge diversity and possibilities of saying. Works by Drawing the Centre of Young Drawings, Felicity Clear, Helen Farrell of MTU, English artist Rachel Goodyear, Irish artist Julie Merriman, the architects uh, O'Donnell and Toomey, and the really innovative um, architectural firm uh, and Clapham Band were all accompanied by key figures within drawing um, uh, practice and theory, including Barbara Walker, the English artist um, who uses large scale charcoal drawings to look at ideas of um, black English history. And all these always were imagined to be around a simple gesture of line making. Previously, the Glucksman had um, uh, drawing in motion, looking at ideas of uh, animation and film as being an inspiration. For art. So you can see that idea of drawing, not looking at its own discipline, but also moving across discipline around other sources and forms. So 
So what I'm beginning to get a picture of is a lot of drawing going on monster. <laughs> Similarly, the current show in the Guggenheim of Gega or Gertrude Goldschmidt measuring infinity uh, presents her a, a retrospective of her absolutely beautiful and delicate 3D constructions. Uh, as the exhibition text notes, Gego put forward radical ideas through her intensive investigations of structural systems, transparency, tension, fragility, spatial relations, and the optical effects of motion are all methodically addressed in her singular body of work. I love to visit her because it looks an absolutely amazing retrospective. Where she uses three dimensional thin steel and copper lines um, which operate in space, gently welded together, referencing organic forms and simple linear structures and systematic spatial investigations. They look like, like delicate scaffolding for a flower. What these initiatives and shows present is the plural, non binary potential of drawing, moving between abstraction and representation, 2D and 3D, the authoritative and the incidental. The late and really wonderful artist, uh, Flitter Barlow, in 2022, on the occasion of the show, Joseph Boyce, 40 years of drawing, thought of drawing as simply an activity when two surfaces touch. And she further suggests that these surface interactions could be the trace of lead from a pencil, a spike of cement, a collage leaf onto anything from paper to brick, from cardboard to steel. So what we see in the works of Beyond Drawing is the engagement with diverse materials, accident, um, excuse me, actions, and potentialities. Without suggesting overall thematic concerns, as after all drawing is not a theme, within the works of these six diverse artists, who as curator are our primary scholars as having outspoken ways of working, we might discern some key motivations and forms within contemporary drawing. The care about space and architecture, of line being both illusionistic and spatial, the concerns of language and information, the weaving of previous works, the fragment and the detail, the reassembly and gestural state, and in many cases, investment of intense, intense, intense labor. In this way, it is an extension of some of the key concerns of the Irish drawing project, Drawing Decentered. Uh, I've been fortunate enough to know the work of the Drawing Initiative, Drawing Decentered, of which Felicity, Clear, Kiro, Two, and Mary Walsh are co founders, and of the considerable work of Arnold Kramer. I think in Arnold's case, if we were to think of the Dutch sporting analogy of total football, we can consider Arnold's commitment to and promotion of drawing as being total tenor, total drawing. The international collaborations that this and other drawing initiatives show um, is a shared investigation of the plurality and richness of drawing and its open endedness. So, in a more general context, this open endedness also leads to rich questions for drawing that are still relevant to the interrogation of its current status. Has drawing become part of a medium fetish? If drawing as a diverse form is the only thematic link in a lot of drawing shows, then what is the content? Is there a content that is specific to drawing? What makes questions like these matter is that there is still a wider range of possibilities to test these propositions. For me, what I find so exciting about drawing is the idea of division and revelation. It's also an interrogation of the visible, maybe not just a recording of the visible. Artists that are so unlike what I do, but interesting and intriguing and exciting. Thank you. Thank you. I think so, yeah. Um, you know, there's, there's, there's the elephant in the room of money. And, um, you know, there was all talk about in the mid 90s with the growing of the art fair and the booth and galleries showing in small spaces that suddenly drawing became very useful. And began to be promoted in a different way. And then the recession hit 2008, 2010. Also, bizarrely, the good time of drawing become and claiming as drawing, which is really exciting.
Can I have a related question, Brian? I'm just wondering where drawing is for, uh, you mentioned education and in your own teaching in, in QW, uh, amongst the older students coming in, uh, I presume it forms a large part of portfolios. And is it something that you find they drift away from and come back to after years? Yeah, I think, um, I know it's something that we look at for our portfolios, is we look at the three things, and the first thing is drawing. Um, but, I mean, one of the sort of democratising things about drawing as a form is that most people have had a pencil in their hand or in primary school or whatever, um, they've drawn in whatever sort of form. And maybe as they get older, you know, some people might say, well, I have a proficiency around this or a, a confidence in around this. And they begin to drift towards um, art college, usually. But also what seems to happen is that once you hit puberty, you can't draw anymore because suddenly you can't draw like a camera. And I don't know, I'm sure there's a psychological reasoning for that, but um, that, that way of just thinking that drawing is only about observation it is like a real thing. And it's a thing that puts people off a lot of drawing for, without over romanticizing it when you're younger. You just draw the band of the future. You're not concerned about technique, you're not, you're not concerned about looking at much of your own sort of personal narratives and this is like a you know, monster of all the or whatever. So we've all those sort of wonderful, playful things that happen. And then something happens around the teens that just becomes about observation. And then usually we just end up looking at the people who work through that. Either they're extremely good at observation or they're extremely good at being playful. Um, so it's really interesting to see that kind of come into college. There has been a shift of late over a number of years about not teaching at all. So that's something we've never done and we've always brought drawing into ways of thinking, practice and research and that it's a really important tool and we teach them observational drawing and all those sort of things. And it's just interesting because people end up using it, if not even centrally in their practice. But for the last couple of years, it's only really interesting to see this kind of coming through. Just from looking at other degree shows as well too, you kind of, kind of see it. But usually you can. From Munster. <laughs> Its own history of existence and where it used to be positioned as very much a secondary 